everyone, in this video, I'm going to wipe code an iOS app that will help me to organize all the useful links that I keep on finding online. And for that, all I'm going to use is cursor and Xcode. And I'm not going to write a single line of code by myself and will depend entirely on cursor as if I'm completely new to iOS development. Let's see how far we can go. So let's jump in and wipe code our app together. Let's first create a new Xcode project and I'm going to name this one as Linkbase. You can choose wherever you want to create it. Also, let me quickly explain you what exactly are we trying to build here. So I am an avid saver of useful links that I find online, be it on social media like LinkedIn, Twitter, Reddit or any other good website and all sort of links. But the problem is they all get lost. Bookmarks, DMs, WhatsApp charts, they are all over the place. So I thought, why not build an app that will help me to organize all these links in one place. I just simply provide a link, give it a title, give it a category and also few tags to it. So that whenever I need it, I can simply browse and find those links easily. Okay, so our export project is ready. Now it's time to connect it with cursor. If you don't have cursor, you can download it from here. Since I have it already, I'm going to open it and connect my export project with cursor. So I simply have to click on open project, find wherever my project is. This will connect my Xcode project with cursor. And this is the editor wherein we'll be writing the prompt to be given to cursor so that it can create the app that we want. But before giving it a prompt, there is one important thing that I would like to add here. There is a concept called as context in cursor or in any other AI tool that you would find. So context is basically an additional information that you would like to give the AI tool so that it takes care of all those things while developing the application in this particular case. I want cursor to follow Apple's best practices. So I will provide the link of the documentation of Swift, Swift UI, as well as UI design do's and don'ts to cursor before proceeding further. Now for adding it, well, it's pretty simple. Let me quickly tell you. For example, if I want to add the Swift UI documentation link, I will click on add context since it's a doc. So I will click on doc click on add new doc, provide the link. Now it will ask me to name it and click on confirm. You can now see it is being added. Now I can add them as well by going to docs, choosing the ones that we want to add. Now for writing the prompt, I will take help of chat GPT. I've already given it a prompt. Like you are an expert at writing prompts for cursor. I want to give a prompt to cursor for creating an iOS mobile app using Swift UI named Linkbase, which is basically an app which stores and categorizes your saved links. This is what it does and the pain point, which I have just explained you what exactly are we trying to solve. ChatGPT has beautifully given us the entire prompt, though the prompt to be given to cursor is written by ChatGPT, but at this point, it's very important to read it properly and see if it matches your imagination of the app or not. Because if you provide a good prompt, cursor would be able to develop the app in a better way. So if there are points that are missing, just mention it here so that it, uh, ChatGPT can improve the prompt according to your requirements. So let's copy this prompt and give it to cursor. So let's see what it builds. You can see uh, it has just stated the folder structure that it wants to follow for building the app. It has also given the file descriptions and then now it is asking me whether I would like to proceed with generating the initial Swift files and folder structure as outlined above or not or if I want to improve it. But I think that's a great part about Cursor. Uh, though not every time it asks you this thing, it directly starts creating the application. But you can give some rules to it or you can also in the prompt itself tell it that First, give me all the folder structure and the files that you are planning to create. And once you are okay with it, then only you can say, okay, create the files. So it's a good approach. So let's uh, give it a prompt. Go ahead with creating the file and folders. Now it will take some time to generate the code, all the files and folders. Then we'll be able to build and run the project to see whether it matches our requirements or not. You can see how beautifully it has created all the folders and files within it. If you go to your project, you can see there is a models folder, utils folder, view model and view. So this is great. Now let's go to Xcode and build and run the project. But once you come to Xcode, you realize your files and folders are not getting reflected here because there is a problem. Once you create any files or folder outside of Xcode, they generally don't get reflected automatically. You have to add them manually, even if they are present in the project folder. If you go to file, click on add files to link paste. Here you can see these folders are present and all the files within it are present. 
but unfortunately they are not visible in ex your Xcode project. So in order to get them, uh, there are two things that you need to understand. One, if it's a new folder, you will have to delete it from your project folder and create it newly in your Xcode project. If it's a file, you can simply get it included in your Xcode project by going to file, going on add files to link base and adding it. You just need to make sure that you add the file to the target, which is link base project in our case. Okay, so uh, I will just take some time and get all the folders over here. So let me quickly do that. Now I've created all the folders and added the files within them which were created by Cursor. Uh, if you have any suggestion on how I can improve this particular workflow, please let me know in the comments. Okay, moving ahead, there are a few errors in the code. Let's quickly check what it is. So there is an error that invalid character in the source file. We are getting this error in category view, link row view and tags view, the same error. Let's go to Cursor and give it this prompt that we are getting this error to so that it can solve it. You can see it automatically detected in which all files this problem was there and it also solved them. Now, since the files were already created, I don't have to worry. Cursor would have automatically reflected those changes. Let's check if the error is gone. Now, there is some other error that we are getting. Let's again give this to Cursor and see if it can solve it. So I've given this prompt. Let's hit enter and see. Okay, it has suggested me how we can fix this error. The error is caused by this line in your for each usage. Asking me, would uh, you like me to apply this fix to all the relevant file? I would just say yes. Hopefully now the error should be gone. Great, all the errors are now gone. It's now time to build the project and see what it gives. But for building the project, I'm not going to use Xcode because this is so cumbersome. I will have to move uh, to cursor, then come back to Xcode. So instead of this, we will take a different route. There is a extension called as SweetPad. Let me quickly show you what it is and what it does. So SweetPad is a VS Code extension that allows you to build and run your Xcode project for iOS, Mac OS and watchOS application directly in VS Code. Since Cursor is built upon VS Code, so we can install this extension in Cursor also and directly build and run our project from there. So for installing the extension, just like how you do in VS Code, if you don't know it, let me quickly show you. You simply have to go here, search the extension, which is SweetPad. Here it is. You simply have to install it. And once it is installed, it will be visible to you in your extension. So you can see uh, SweetPad is there. I can pin it. Now you can click on this to build and run a project. So let me click on this and see how our app looks like. Okay, before this, it is also asking me to finalize on the simulator. So let's choose iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's now time to try it out and see it in action. So let's find out a link. I have been exploring foundation model framework just released in WWDC and I want to save this YouTube URL for future purpose. Let's add it to our app. I'll click on plus, give it a title and I'll give the URL that I have just got. I'll also give it a tag. Let's uh, give it a tag and I can also select on the category. It's not work, personal, social or news. So I'll give it a custom category. I think here we should have an additional functionality wherein if the user uses custom option, they should be given a field to enter so that it gets added to the list of categories. Let's see, uh, let's choose custom for now and click on save. Great. The link is now added. Uh, there is a title, there is the link and there is also a date on which I added it. On the card itself, there are two options as well. One is to share and one is to open the link. But I think they are not functional as of now, so I can add that functionality too. Uh, if I go to say tags, my tag is mentioned, but within the tag, no link is mentioned. If I go to category, only the categories are listed. Let's try to improve our app now. Let's again write the prompt for all the things that we want to improve in the app. So I have written a few things in the tags and category tab. Also provide the links added within each so that I can filter based on the category as well as tabs. That's one. Secondly, when the user clicks on the added link card, it should take them to the associated details page wherein they also get the functionality to share it and open it directly from the app. And we also want to give the option to edit and delete any particular link. And lastly, when the user 
chooses a custom category they should be given the option to create a new category altogether so that they can use it for future purpose i think i should give them one by one because cursor might get confused and not implement all of it but i'm just trying cursor out so let's see if it is able to implement all those things in one go i just built it again and let's quickly see what all changes it has made so the card is improved now the share and uh, open link option are not directly given on the card but if i click on it i can edit it okay so the edit is given from here but if i go to tags also within apple yt i have a link uh, if i click on it also i get the option to share it which is cool i also get the option to open it so i can directly open the youtube url from here and i can also edit the link from here and can also delete it let's also see the categories so all the categories that were initially listed are stated here because we were initially not able to change the custom so it has stated the custom as it is and all the options are listed here as well now let's see if we deleted whether the link is deleted or not i go now to links it is deleted there is still a lot of scope of improvement for example here it should directly give me an option to add the link because it it might be confusing for the user uh, to find this plus symbol and then add it also when i add a link the link mentioned here should also take me to the link detail view as it is going from tags and categories so all in all i am pretty impressed with what cursor has built so if you have an idea you can just sit on a weekend give cursor some prompts and your app will be ready then you can ship it because the problems you are facing it might be highly likely that others are facing it too but before closing the video i would like to highlight a few caveats of cursor as well so that when you try it you already know these things in advance i have been using the free version of cursor which gives access to gpt 4.1 or the auto mode but i really want to use cloud four models as well since they are considered to be the best for coding so that's one limitation because for that i have to buy a pro plan also while building this app i loved the overall experience but um, cursor integration with export is not as smooth as it is with vs code creation of files and folders can get a bit messy so i need to figure that out and lastly if you have never coded before cursor might be a bit overwhelming for you uh it sometimes loops on the same mistake again and again so you will have to step in and manually debug it but if you even if you are a beginner at programming it could be a game changer and if you are trying to build something with cursor that's really solving a problem i would love to hear about it please let me know in the comments so that's all for this video if you like it do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future